in the room Power Faith Compassion It's in the room It's in the room It's in the room Our Father hears us It's in the room Whatever you need is in the room. Whatever you need is in the room. Come on, say miracle.
wonderful Wednesday night, wonder working Wednesday. Don't worry, just let God work it out for you. I don't know, it may be financial, it may be a, a sickness in your life, it may be your children, it may be your marriage, but on this wonder working Wednesday, don't worry about it. Just let the Lord work it out for you. Tonight, I want to talk about favored to flourish. Repeat after me, favored to flourish. I want to go to two passages of scripture. Let's go first of all in the Old Testament to the book of Esther. And I know perhaps you may have to dust that off in the Old Testament collection of writings. The book of Esther, Esther chapter five, verses two and three, Esther chapter five, verses two and three, it says, and it was so when the king saw Esther, the queen standing in the court that she obtained, listen, favor in his sight. Talking about exerces, the king exerces in his sight. And the king held out to Esther the golden scepter. This was an emblem of regal power and sovereignty that was in his hand. So Esther drew near. She come close and touched the top of the scepter. Then said the king unto her, what will thou queen? Esther, and what is thy request? It shall be given thee to the half of the kingdom. Our next passage of scripture is in the book of Psalms. The book of Psalms. Psalm 1 and verse 3. Psalm 1 and verse 3, it reads thus, And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Favored to flourish. Esther was a Jewish captive. Her Jewish name was Hadessa, which means mirth. The leaves, flowers, and berries of the mirth were used for perfume and as seasoning for food. Brothers and sisters, let me tell you, we are the salt of the earth, those who are born again. And we ought to be seasoned in the midst of our family, in the midst of our friends, community, and job, that which is rottening, seasoning. Then it says perfume. We ought to be a sweet-smelling savior in the nose of, nost of the nostrils of God. Mirth also suggests tonight peace and joy. Hadessa was her Jewish name, which means peace and joy. We ought to be peacemakers, and the joy of the Lord is our strength. Esther saved her people tonight, the Jews, from a plot to eliminate them. Perhaps you've read this story. How Haman wanted Mordecai to bow down to her, to him rather, because Mordecai took care of Esther after her parents died. And this egotistical, narcissistic, ambitious man wanted Mordecai to bow down to him. And Mordecai would not bow because he knew that you should never bow to any other God, no wooden or stone God. The only person you bow to is the God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And so he was upset and got the king to sign an edict or a command 
that the Jews in the province would be killed. But brothers and sisters, let me tell you, he had set up a gallow to hang Mordecai. But God gave Esther favor to go before the king. And you usually couldn't go before the king, especially if the king had a bad day and he was upset. You could be put in jail or dungeon. You could be killed, executed. But God gave her favor. When Vesta, before the king's guest, they had a party, they were drinking, and he wanted to display herself. She refused. And so she was banished from the palace. Look at God's divine providence. Because see the presence but we know that God's providence was working in Esther's behalf and the children of Israel the Jews just because you cannot see the sun does not mean that the sun uh, don't exist and so my brothers and sisters look at what happened the king heard her request about the Jews and how he, Haman, had plotted. Let me tell you something. God worked in that situation. And let me tell you what happened to Haman. He was hung on the gallows that he had set up for somebody else. So you got to be careful. When God has favor on a person, you got to be careful how you dig ditches and how you try to set traps. And snares for them because the trap and the snare and the ditch that you set up for them to fall in, you will fall in yourself. And so the king looked at Hadessa. She was beautiful. She was lovely. And let me say this to women who are listening and young ladies. You are beautiful and that you are lovely. Clothes don't make you, you make clothes. It's not the lipstick. It's not the earrings. It's not the jewelry. It's not the dress. That's only uh, accessories. You have to know uh, that you are beautiful on the inside. You are adorned on the inside. That you are lovely yourself and that you are beautiful. Esther was beautiful. She was lovely. And let me tell you, my brothers and sisters, because of the favor on her life. God made her a queen. The story of Esther's rise as, as uh, an unknown Jewish girl to become the queen of a mighty empire illustrates on tonight that she was favored to flourish. Listen to what it says in verse three in chapter five. Then said the king unto her, what will thou, queen Esther, and what is thy request? It shall be given thee to the half of the kingdom. A poor Jewish girl was given half of the kingdom of the king. Listen, chapter two, verse 17 says, and the king loved Esther. Above all the women and she obtained, better put this down, ladies. Chapter two of Esther, verse 17 says, and the king loved Esther. You got to know that God loved you. And you must learn how to love yourself above all the women. Stop trying to compare yourself to other women. God made you who you are. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. She obtained grace and favor in his sight more than all the virgins, the pure women, so that he set the royal crown. Look at the favor tonight. Look at the favor upon her head and made her queen instead of Vesta. Let me tell you tonight, my brothers and sisters, God is getting ready to move you 
to a higher level. <laughs> He's getting ready to move you to another dimension. And it's coming from a place and person who you least expect. Grace is both a one-time act, the grace of God in giving you salvation through faith in Jesus Christ and a way of life through faith in Jesus Christ. Allowing the grace of God to continue to do wonderful works in you. Listen, grace is both a one time act. Get this tonight. The grace of God in giving you salvation through faith in Jesus and a way of life, allowing the grace of God to continue to do wonderful works in you. It is God tonight who will. And he worketh in you to do his good pleasures. In either case, grace is simply God's special favor. I need you to put your hand on yourself and say that I am blessed and highly favored. Because of his grace, God gives you many things that you don't deserve and can't take credit for. For by grace are you saved through faith. Not of works. It is the gift of God, lest, lest any man should boast. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9. God's grace makes all the difference tonight in your life and in mine. It is the difference between belonging to God or being alone, between having strength or being weak, between being free or a slave to sin or this system between enjoying God's friendship or being his enemy between heaven or hell. Imagine a life tonight without God's favor. You have been forgiven. You have confessed your sins. You have accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. You have God's favor. And I don't know about you. Just think about it. Imagine a life without God's favor or grace. And you imagine a life of loneliness, fear, slavery, guilt, weakness, and helplessness. Thank God that he has bestowed his grace on you and me. Where sin abound, grace did much more abound. It overflowed more. Paul said, but by the grace of God, I am what I am. I used to say I am that I am, but it is I am what I am. And his grace, this is Paul. Now, Paul was a murderer. Paul went around persecuting the church until he was converted on the Damascus road. He said, and his grace, which was bestowed upon me, was not in vain. First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 10. Favor mean to regard someone likely to succeed or win. Winners never quit. Quitters never win. I need you to say, even during this pandemic, I am a winner, not a loser. I will succeed. I need you to put your hand on yourself and say that my life is a success story. There are 10 keys. You can put it down if you like tonight. To God's favor. Love God with all your heart, your mind, your soul and strength. Number two, love people. This is God's kingdom directive and distinction. Or distinctive. Love thy neighbor as thyself. You must love God 
and you must love thy neighbor as thyself. Number three, hate what God hates. As you make a stand tonight for God in this uh, perverse and crooked generation and his cause, his favor is released upon you. If you stand up for God, God will stand in you. Let me say that again. If you stand up for God, he will stand up in you. Number four, give your tithe, 10 percent and offerings to God. And I want to express my gratitude to all of the members of Wings of Love, even Facebook friends. Friends of Wings of Love who have been giving to this ministry. God bless you. Thank you so much. Give your tithe and offerings to God. Thank you for your gifts. And watch the windows of heaven open and pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive. Listen. Look up above. Windows are opening. Don't worry about shed doors because God can open windows. S. Number five, be faithful. Revelation 2.10 says, and God will give you a crown of life. Number six, be righteous. We are the righteousness of God. Number seven, be submitted. Submit yourself to God. Resist the devil and he'll flee from you. I submit myself to thee, God. I am in submission to the will, ways, and word of God. Number eight, be humble. First Peter 5 and 6 says, humble yourselves tonight. Therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. Number nine, be honest. Don't be crooked. Don't be unfair. Don't cheat. Don't steal your way through life. Don't be a con man or scheme your way through life. Just be honest. You talking about you want favor. Be honest. Number 10, get wisdom. And I always say, Lord, help me to be wise and not a fool. Psalm 90 and 12 says, so teach us to number our days. We don't know how long we have to be here that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom, wisdom. James said, if you don't have it, ask God for wisdom. You need to put this down tonight and read it before you go to bed. James chapter one. Verses five, six and seven. If you don't have wisdom, you need to talk to God and ask him for some. Proverbs eight and thirty five says chapter eight, verse thirty five says, put it down for those who find me. And life find life rather and receive favor from the Lord for those who find me, not a house, a car. Money, clothes, gold, silver, a boat, but find me. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Then the house, then the car, then the money, then the clothes, perhaps the gold and the silver and maybe a boat. He'll give to you. But most importantly tonight, you won't favor. You, never, you better pursue and go after God and not so much the goods. Not so much the creature comforts, but the creator. For those who find me, find life. Let me tell you something. If you really want to be, if you really want to live large, you need to get God in your life. Because people have things and still not happy. Look at the Gates. Mr. and Mrs. Gates, 130, they're worth $130 billion and they are divorcing. Money don't bring no happiness. <laughs> Told my wife, Lady J, if we just had a few dollars like that, I wouldn't be thinking about divorcing. 
I'm thinking about, I'd be thinking about traveling and doing some remodeling around the house. Favor comes in stages. We have to grow in it. We do not necessarily receive maximum favor, maximum favor all at once tonight. Listen, St. Luke, put this down, chapter 2, verse, verse 30, 52, St. Luke, chapter 2, verse 52 says, and Jesus, now this is the Son of God, increased, grew in wisdom and statue, in other words, height or age or a decree or law that God gives and in favor. I like this in favor with God and man. Let me say that again. Not only did he have favor with God, the preserver and sustainer of this world, animals and creeping things, man and woman, but God gave him favor even with man. Whoo, what a blessing. If Jesus had to grow in favor, then tonight so do we. God has favored his children to flourish, not to be flops. Let me say that again. God has favored his children to flourish and not be flops. Flourish, to bear fruit. To do well, to increase, to develop, to flourish, meaning to grow luxuriantly. Woo! What are you saying, Pastor Jay? Meaning to thrive. Let me tell you, during this pandemic, we must do more than just survive. We must thrive. Let me say that again. I, I don't just want to be uh, a survivor, the survival of the fittest. I want to thrive. I want to go higher, do more. It means to achieve success. In other words, to prosper. Third John verse two says, third John verse two says in the New Testament, Beloved, now look at, listen to the word, beloved. That's not talking to a sinner. That's talking to the saint. Beloved, we are the beloved of God. I wish, I desire above all things. Talk to us, John. This is not Jackson. <laughs> that thou mayest prosper and be in health. I need you to say tonight because favor is on my life. I'm speaking into my life, into my family, health and wholeness. I know that many have died from the, uh, the virus, COVID-19, but I need you. There is somebody who is sick with COVID-19, even as I speak on this wonder working Wednesday night. And I'm speaking streaming live and I need you to touch and agree with me. They are in the hospital right now. You can't go there. You can't be with them, but you can speak it. There's power in life and death in the tongue. Speak it. Health, health, health and wholeness. Even as thy soul prospereth. Soul prosperous. Listen. We should desire spiritual prosperity over material prosperity. Nothing wrong with material prosperity, but material prosperity should not be prime in our life. Spiritual prosperity should be prime and material prosperity should be secondary. Flourishing people are happy and satisfied. Happy and satisfied. Don't worry. Do, 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 do. Be happy. Happy people. 
Dun, dun. We used to hear that a long time ago back in the 70s. Psalm 1 and verse 1 says, Blessed, happy. Blessed mean happy is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. Stop listening to folk who don't have any oil on their life. Stop listening to people uh, who don't have the Holy Ghost in their life. Don't listen to their advice. Walking not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners. Do not stand in the way of sinners. A lot of times you can hinder other folk who are sinners, who are lost from coming to God by your conduct, bad conduct and behavior. Don't stand in the way of sinners. Nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful, those who make fun of God and the things of God and mock God. We must, if you want to flourish on tonight, we must be separated from the world. The world is anything that separates us from God or causes us to disobey him. You need to put this down. Separation is not isolation but contact without contamination. <laughs> Woo! Listen, separation is not isolation, but contact without contamination. Flourishing people, people who are favored to flourish, walk in the ways of God. They stand on the promises of God. And they sit at the feet of God. They enjoy being in the presence of God. They tend to see their lives as having a purpose. You're not here by accident. Those who are favored to flourish. God has you here for a purpose. Rick Warren has a book uh, entitled Purpose Driven Life. Decent book. Read it. All things work together for them who love God and call according to his purpose. They feel some degree of mastery and accept all parts of themselves. They have a sense that they are always growing. If you're not growing, you are dying. Let me say that again. That's not funny. If you're not growing, you are dying. Always growing, evolving, and changing. My mother-in-law used to say it's a poor wind that never changed. Even in crucial and challenging circumstances. I was listening to Lady J teaching her students while I was preparing this lesson to bring to you tonight. And she was teaching them a lesson on trees or about trees. It was a good analogy, and it, I mean, it arrested my attention, and I want to use it tonight. First of all, notice the substance. You're favored to flourish. Notice the substance. Let's go to Psalm 1, verse 3. Psalm 1, verse 3. And it reads thus, the first point is the substance, and he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. The water represents the substance. We are like a tree, she said. The crown or top of the tree, she was teaching her students, is like our head. Man, it provoked my attention. The branches are like our arms. The tree uses its leaves to breathe. The leaves are like our nose that we breathe through. I'm like, teach it, Lady J. The bark is like our skin. The sap in the tree is like the blood in our body. And the root, that's important, of the tree is like our feet. They keep us Grounded. And tonight, we must be like a tree 
planted by the rivers of waters. A tree can be used to build chairs and furniture, pencils and things of this nature. A tree is to be Use the wood of that tree. We are to be like a tree planted. In other words, we need to be near the water. There's a rivers. There's a rivers now. Rivers. There's a constant flow of water. Irrigation. A constant current of water. A tree needs light, in other words, the sun. It needs water and roots to live. We need Jesus Christ, who is the living uh, water. Listen, Jesus is the living word. But also tonight we need the written word. The Bible, verse 2 in Psalm 1 says, But his delight, his enjoyment is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy was the Torah, the law that the Jews read. They had moral law, the Ten Commandments. They had the ceremonial laws, the civil laws, and they delighted in the law of the Lord. But we are to enjoy today in this Western civilization in Detroit, Michigan. We are to delight ourselves in the word of God and we are to meditate upon it day and night. You talking about favor, get in the word, meditate, ponder, muse, reflect. Meditation is tonight to the spirit what digestion is to the body. When you eat, you just don't eat, eat, and then don't chew it up, swallow it whole. You got to take your time and chew and chew so you can digest your food properly. You don't just... Get the Bible and just read over it, skim over it like that. Uh, I'm going to say, blessed is the man that walking down the counter. You don't just do that. You have to take your time and read it. Think upon it. Reflect upon it. Meditate upon it. We must be rooted and grounded in the word of God. As a tree is nourished by constant supplies of water tonight, without which under the burning eastern sun it would die. Isn't it sad that people be asking the question, how many times have you gone through the Bible? <laughs> Yay. But let me ask you another question. How many times have the Bible been through you? So the life of every child of God, pastor and parishioners all over this land and country is maintained by the supply of natural water, of course, but most importantly, spiritual water, which represent the living word, Jesus Christ, and the written word, the Bible. This is a sad commentary on so many Christians tonight. They are like artificial plants or cut flowers with no roots. <laughs> they are dry and parched because they are connected or hooked up to the empty wells of the world. And you wonder why you're not satisfied. You're not fulfilled because the waters of the world cannot give permanent and lasting satisfaction and fulfillment. And you wonder why, brothers and sisters, you are not flourishing. Joshua 1 and 8 says, This book of the law shall not depart out of thy, thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate, there it is again, therein, day and night, 
In the morning time, get in the Word. Lady J and I, we listen to Charles Stanley in the morning. And then I try to hear a word again. It's on your iPad or your iPhone. They have prayers which you can, that you can listen to. They have the word that you can listen to day and night that thou mayest observe. Listen to what he says. To do according to all that is written therein. For then, listen now, thou shalt make thy way prosperous and then thou shall have good success don't be deceived by the agents of hell thinking that money and things and possessions is evidence that somebody that the favor of god is on people like no because the mafia have things like had things like that brothers who slinging drugs can have that. Actors and actresses can have that. Sinners can have that. But I'm talking about the kind of favor that eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, or enter to the heart of man what God has in store for his children. Secondly, tonight, notice the season. Number one, the substance. Number two, the season. I'm just about finished. Verse three says, also that bringeth forth his fruit or her in his or her season. Ecclesiastes three and one says, to everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. You need to understand chaos is God's time. And God has a set time for all of us. And let me tell you something, my brothers and sisters. A season is a part of the year. There are four divisions of the year. Spring, summer, autumn or fall, and winter. Don't miss this. Sometimes... We experience tonight a rainy season, a hot season, a windy season, or a cold season. Hallelujah. However, God can bring forth spiritual fruit no matter what season it may be. Romans 6 and 22 says, but now being made free from sin. In other words, you, we don't have to be controlled by sin and become servant to God. Ye have your fruit unto holiness, meaning that you're separate and set apart. We are to practice being holy, separate and set apart for God's use. And the end, everlasting life. James 3.18 says, And the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace. Hebrews 13 and 15 says, By him therefore let us offer the sacrifice of praise even when you don't feel like it because you are, watch this favor to flourish, you ought to give him the sacrifice of praise. Praise is what I do. Praise is who I am to God continually. And that is the fruit of our lips giving thanks to his name. Ephesians 5, 8, 9 says, let me wrap this up. For ye were sometimes darkness. All of us was in, we were in darkness but he brought us out of darkness into his marvelous light, translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. He brought us from sin to salvation. He brought us from death to life on our way to hell. Now we're on our way to heaven for ye were sometimes darkness. But now are ye light in the Lord. In other words, we ought to be walking in truth and not error. Light represent truth. Darkness represent error. 
and sin. Walk as children of light. Listen, for the fruit, for the fruit of the spirit is in all goodness. I want you to know, my brothers and sisters, that we can experience the goodness of the Lord. One writer said, except he saw the goodness of the Lord in the land, if he didn't see the goodness of the Lord in the land, he would have fainted. In spite of all the bad that's going around in the world and that's around us, we still, because we are favored to flourish, we can still experience the goodness of God and righteousness and truth. Galatians, I know you're familiar with this book and this passage, this chapter. Galatians 5, and 23 says, but the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness and temperance against such. There is no law. But there is the sowing and then the reaping, the planting and then the harvest. I need somebody to say because I'm favored to flourish, I have sowed, sowed. So I have sown rather a seed. Seed can be money. Let me tell you something. It can be the seed of God's word. We have sown a seed. Expect a harvest. Say to yourself, my harvest is coming. Because I've sown a seed. Genesis 8 and 22 says, while the earth remaineth, and the earth is still here. Jesus haven't come back yet. Seed time and harvest. There it is. And cold and heat and summer and winter and day and night shall not cease. Now, if seed time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night continues, that means... That a continued harvest is coming your way. You say, Pastor, I, I, I don't have a job. I, I, I don't have no means of income. But let me tell you, my brothers and sisters, God has a way. You give what you can. And you give it from your heart. And when you sow it. Let me tell you, God see it and he will bless it. I need you to speak over your life. Abundance. Bounty. Come on. Abundance. Bounty over my life, over my family, over my children, over my marriage, over my finances, over my health. Paul said in 1 Corinthians 3, 6, and 7, I have planted Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. So then neither is he that planted anything, neither he that watered, but God, pay close attention to this, that giveth the increase. Do your part and let God do his. I believe as I teach on this wonderful Wednesday night that this is our season of increase. Lord, whatever you're doing in this season, Lord, don't do it. Oh, 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 oh don't do it without me. Pastor William Murphy said, this is my season for grace, for favor. This is my season to reap what I have sown. See, I haven't been perfect, but I sure been faithful. See, God's got a purpose, yes, and I know he's able. I've got a seed in the ground that he's blessing no more stressing. I've got a seed in the ground. Now I know him. I can show him. This is, this is my season 
for grace, for favor. This is my season to reap what I have sown. Thirdly, notice the success. Verse 3 says, his leaf in psalm also shall not wither or fade. And whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Remember I told you that Lady J was teaching uh, her students, her, her, the kindergarten students, uh, a lesson about trees. And she mentioned the leaf. The tree used the leaf to breathe. While you still have breath in your body, there is still hope for you. To flourish. You still have the blood running warm in your veins. The sap that she talked about. But let me take it a little further. The sap represents the Holy Ghost. Inside us. His leaf also shall not wither. Fade. And whatsoever. He doeth. Shall prosper. A life of piety. You live a godly life. A life of piety will be followed by prosperity. Let me say it again. A life of piety with God's children will be followed by prosperity. First Timothy. And I'm closing. Chapter 4. Verses 8 and 9 says. Godliness is profitable. Don't miss this. Unto all things having promise of the life that now is. In other words, in the here and now. And that which is to come. Meaning eternity. Listen to what the writer says in verse 9. This is a faithful, faithful saying. This is not nothing false. This is not a lie. Faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation. God bless you. I enjoyed teaching you tonight. Let me say in closing, don't be a prisoner of your past, but get ready. And this is Jackson, but T.D. Jakes would say, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready. But get ready. In your now for what is coming next. I need you to scream out, say, I'm waiting on my next in my now. I'm waiting on my next in my now. You tonight are favored to flourish. Know that even if you fail, that it is not final tonight. God can turn your failures into success. There are three ways that you can give tonight, and I really appreciate it. Thank you so much for your sacrificial gifts, and I pray that your giving will not be in vain. I need you to know that you're favored the floors, and you have to give, my brothers and sisters. You have to sow into the kingdom of God, and God will bless you over and over and over again. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Dear God, our Father, we thank you that we are blessed and highly favored, not because of our own merit, not because of our own goodness, nothing that we have done. We thank you for your grace. It is amazing. We thank you for your favor upon our lives. We love you, God. We bless you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. We just want to say, coming up, Happy Mother's Day to all of our mothers. Thank you for your dedication and commitment to your husbands, to your children, to the home. I'm going to tell you, when mother is gone, a home or a house is just a home. And so we really appreciate our mothers. Salute to our mothers. Congratulations to our mothers. We love you, mothers. God bless you on this wonderful Wednesday night.
Mm-hmm.